Hi, and welcome, everybody. My name is Dennis Brown, and this is my weekly Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. Today, I'm going to share with you why niching down as a freight broker is critical to your success. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to tell you a quick story happened over the weekend, and I think you guys will get a get a kick out of that. But that's why we're here today. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, if you're catching this on replay, hit me up in the comments with hashtag replay. I love to hear from my replay folks. For those of you that are joining me live, hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from. I'd love to hear from you, give you some shout outs uh, before we get started. Okay. So we're going to let some people get live and then we're going to get the show on the road. So yeah, we got a bunch of people live. Cool. All right. So uh, again, hit me up in the comments. We'll do shout outs. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some shout outs at the beginning. Then we're going to do the training. We're going to talk all about why it's critical that you niche down as a freight broker. And then we're going to do live Q&A at the end. Okay. So that's what we're going to do at the end. If you stick around to the end, you're going to be able to ask me any questions, whether it be about this training or freight broker startup or freight broker sales or marketing or whatever questions you have. And I will do my absolute best to try to get to everybody's questions today. So that's where we're at. Uh, again, hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from. I'll give you some shout outs and then we'll get the show on the road once we get some people live. And wow. Okay, cool. All right. So we got John Heller from Johnstown, PA. Welcome. Corey from uh, Billings, Montana, as usual. Tamika from Tennessee. Welcome. We got Next Links from Valley Stream, New York. Welcome to the stream. We got Ballin from Amarillo, Texas. And we got people coming in from all over the place. That's awesome. So listen, you guys, this, I'm so glad that you guys made this training because this is a very important lesson that every freight broker startup and every freight agent startup needs to learn. And unfortunately, some of them learn the lesson the hard way and they pay the ultimate price, which is they go out of business. And so, you know, I think it's important that you're here. I'm glad you're here. Regardless of whether you've, you know, you're considering starting and becoming a freight broker, freight agent, or you've already launched your business or you're about to launch your business, um, I think you will definitely get some nuggets from this today. And again, plus we're going to do live Q&A on the back end. Welcome Joe Almighty from Florida. Welcome Kristen from Greenville, Texas. Welcome Victor from LA. Welcome Robert Ivy from Noonan, Georgia. All right, cool. So we got people from all over. Again, once again, we're getting some people live. Welcome Clyde from Waldorf, Maryland. Sweet. All right, awesome. We got people, a lot of people on YouTube, a few people on LinkedIn, some people on Facebook. All right, cool. Far and above, the winner is link is uh, YouTube. Everybody loves to stream this on YouTube, so that's awesome. Uh, M. Smith from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Cool. All right, listen, so got a lot of notes, a lot of notes, almost two pages of notes to go over today. So there's a lot to cover. So let me just get my bearings here, grab a quick drink. Let a few more people get live, and then we are going to get this show on the road here, all right? Let me shut my notifications off on my phone because I forgot to do that. All right, and I recommend you do the same thing, but do me a favor. The price of admission, if you guys have been to these live trainings before, or this is the first live training you've been to, and you want me to continue to do these free live trainings every Monday at noon, the price of admission is this. Hit the like button no matter where you're at and share the stream. If you're on LinkedIn, hit repost. If you're on Facebook, share the stream. If you're on uh, YouTube, you know, copy the URL and post it into one of your social channels. I appreciate it. We get, you know, people hear about us mainly through word of mouth, mainly through online, and we don't do a lot of paid advertising. So we really, really appreciate your help and letting people know about these free uh, Monday trainings. So, all right, cool. So let's get this show on the road. First, let me say that if you ever hear anybody say, do not, all right, wait, let me, let me, let me start over. Let me start over really quick. I messed up. <laughs> it even happens to me. So um, I, it's very important that I frame this properly. All right. Um, let me start by saying, do not let anyone tell you that niching down as a freight broker or freight agent is a mistake. Let me tell you why I'm talking about this topic today. Over the weekend, quick story, over the weekend, I was on TikTok. Yes, I was on TikTok. 
And I ran across the gentleman. He will remain unnamed. Uh, and he was saying that it was a huge mistake to niche down as a freight broker because you were going to limit your opportunity. You were going to, you weren't going to be able to make as much profit. You were going to miss opportunities with potential shippers. And he went on and on and on about it. Okay. And it really hit me wrong. Right. First, let me start by saying that this is my opinion and don't take it the wrong way, but I think this guy's a complete and utter moron. And there's a very high probability that he's never built a successful business, let alone a successful freight brokerage or freight agency. Okay. So please be careful who you get your information from. Okay. You know, there's a lot of people out there pontificating or trying to get your attention or trying to say ridiculous things on social. We all know that. And so please just be very careful who you get your information from online. Okay. Now, secondly, I've done over $200 million as a freight broker and I've met and trained over 10,000 brokers and agents in my career since 2003. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that niching down, okay, will can literally double or triple your odds of success as a freight broker or freight agent startup. So this is my opinion, but I have seen a lot of people come and go over the years. And one of the biggest issues that they have is they fail to find their freight niche. They try to be a jack of all trades, master of none. And that is a huge mistake. You may have heard me talk about this before. So today I'm going to share with you Three reasons why freight brokers and freight agents must niche down if they're serious about building a successful freight broker or freight agency business. Okay. So lean in really quick because I'm going to go over three. I'm going to go over these quickly and then we'll jump into QA at the end. Number one, niching down allows you to stand out from the crowd. Now, in any marketplace, you're always going to have competition right? The key is to learn how to stand out from the crowd. Envision this, envision a big bunch of yellow bananas, right? And they look great. And then one purple banana sitting in the middle. I want you to think about that for one second. That's you. That's how you need to figure out how to differentiate yourself and stand out from the crowd. And by niching down, there is less competition. There is way less competition. Let me give you an example. When I first started as a freight broker, in 2003, our niche was van, was Northeast outbound van freight. So if it originated in the Northeast, New York, PA, New Jersey, all the way through New England, and it went West or South on a van, that was our niche. Now we niche down into that niche because it, we just went after generic van freight and we said, Hey, we specialize in van freight going from anywhere to anywhere. That still would have been a niche compared to some people who try to do everything. But the reality is it allowed us to focus our efforts. It allowed us to really niche down and eliminate a lot of the competition. Okay. Because there's way less competition for Northeast outbound van freight than there is just van freight in general. Right. So niching down allows you to stand out from the competition. It allows you to get rid of the competition, eliminate some of the competition. And that's number one. Number two. Niching down, listen carefully, niching down positions you as an expert, right? As an expert in your niche versus just another freight jockey smiling and dialing on the phone, all right? Would you rather be viewed as a freight jockey or an expert? Well, if you want to be an expert, you need to niche down. And the reason why this allows you to do this is because focusing on a niche allows you to better serve, right? Better, it allows you to become better at serving your niche, better serving your niche. And then it allows you to, um, which is more likely to be seen as an expert, as a valuable resource, as a trusted partner. So niching down allows you to position yourself and be viewed as an expert. All right. That's number two. Number three, niching down will allow you to grow faster. Now, this is where the gentleman and I part company. He believes that it's going to hurt your growth. And I'm a huge advocate of niching down because it will allow you to grow more. Let me get into more detail. All right. 
First part, niching down allows you to better identify your ideal customer. Listen to that. Very important. Not every customer is in your niche, right? So you don't want your focus to be too generic. You want to niche it down, right? So that deep understanding that you will get about your ideal customer by narrowing down and focusing on them allows you to create better and more compelling messaging that will convert better in sales and marketing. Let me give you a perfect real life example. In my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, which is my Freight Broker Sales Coaching Program, right? We talk a lot about creating a compelling sales hook. And when you create that compelling sales hook, the, the objective there is to get your prospect's attention during the first three, four, five seconds of that call when most people get rejected during cold calling or cold emailing, okay? So that's, it goes hand in hand with that, which is again, understanding, better understanding your, your ideal customer and then creating messaging around that, that it converts at a higher rate, right? Whether that be on the sales and marketing side. Next, by niching down, you're going to be able to focus all of your sales and marketing efforts on speaking only to and directly to your ideal shippers. Okay. So when you can do this, you are going to increase your conversion. Okay. When, when I focused on Northeast outbound van freight, we didn't have to learn everything about flatbeds. We didn't have to learn everything about refrigerated freight. We didn't have to learn about drayage. We didn't have to learn about freight that was originating in California or Texas or Florida. That didn't matter to us. It allowed us to focus not only on building those customer bases in that niche, but it allowed us to build the carrier bases that were allowing us to service that niche. Okay. So listen, I have one more bonus tip. Hold tight really quick. But listen, those are the first three and here's the bonus tip, all right? This is one that most people don't think about. It will allow you by niching down, you will get more visibility online through the search engines. Now, some of you may not be familiar with search engine optimization or search engine marketing or even digital marketing for that matter. But I can tell you that as a freight broker, you're going to need a website, okay? Okay. And when you put your website up, Google is going to index that website. And when you search for your company name, you're going to come up in the results if you've done things right. But here's the reality. I did a quick search before we, uh, before we went live here. And I searched, I pretended as if I were a shipper. And I searched Google for the term flatbed. And guess what I came back with? 67 million results for the term flatbed. Okay. So if you had your website and you said, Hey, we specialize in flatbed freight. Okay. Um, then all of a sudden, if somebody searches for flatbed, all of a sudden the, there's 67,000 results, basically 67,000 competitors potentially ahead of you in the search engines, but lean in because here's the, here's the, here's the caveat, right? Here's the important part about niching down. When I searched for the term flatbeds in Buffalo, New York, all of a sudden there was only about 800,000 results. Now that's still a lot of results, but you see how the competition for the term flatbed versus flatbeds in Buffalo is eight times the competition, okay? So that's what I want you to understand. If you optimize your website for your specific niche, you're more likely to show up in the search results. So those are the three tips plus the bonus. And listen, here's all I wanna share with you. If you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, and you're struggling to put it all together, A to Z, you're getting some misinformation from TikTok and you're getting some information from YouTube and from Google, and you want help, someone who's helped people build six and seven figure freight brokerages, check out my startup program, freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Trained over 10,000 students. We had that program since 2009. I've personally done over $200 million as a freight broker and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee for any reason. So you can check that out at FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. All right, for those of you that want to stick around for the Q&A, right? Hold tight. We're not going to do a giveaway today, but um, we are going to do Q&A. Hold tight. Hold your questions until I say go. Hold your questions, okay? Please hold your questions. Definitely want to get to your questions, but... Um, before we jump into the questions, okay, 
Um, give me some feedback here. Give me some thoughts on how important you think it is to niche down, right? Niching down as a freight broker. Are you, do you, do you understand the importance of it or not? One to 10. One meaning, Dennis, I don't really agree with you. I don't think niching down is the way to go. 10 meaning, yes, it makes total sense. I think I need to niche down and that that will increase my odds of success. Give me some feedback in the comments and then we will jump into live Q&A, but hold your questions until I say go, okay? Hold your questions because they'll get lost in the feed. I'll miss them and I won't answer them for you, okay? Yeah, here's what I can tell you that, you know, I have seen and talked to so many freight brokers and freight agents over the years, and it almost always seems as though the successful ones start by niching down, right? They find a niche. Maybe it's something that they had previous experience with. Maybe it's something that they're interested in. Maybe it's something where they see a trend. Maybe it's uh, something where they have some past relationships, maybe with carriers or with shippers. But niching down is the starting point. And again, here's the cool part. Here's the cool part about niching down. You're not limited to having just one niche. You know, we grew my niche from van northeast outbound. We eventually added refrigerated. We eventually added flatbed. We eventually went into other geographies. We and then by the time I had sold the company in 2016, you know, we had freight moving in almost every niche. I mean, we'd hazmat, we had heavy haul, we had drayage, we had van freight, reefer freight, flatbed freight, we had uh, expedited, we had, we had a bunch of agents that all specialized in different niches. You know, they had one or two core niches that they specialized in because that's what we taught and that's what they, you know, that's how they found the most success. And it made a huge difference. It made a huge difference in our growth trajectory. You know, 2003, we did a million in sales. And then 2000 or 2004, we did a million in sales. 2005, we did 3 million, 6 million, 12 million, 18 million. By the time I sold the company in 2016, we we're doing over $80 million a year in sales. Okay. So I promise you, niching down is the secret to success. If you try to be a jack of all trades, master of none, you are going to struggle. Now, I'm not saying that you won't find a customer here and there, but you are going to struggle with building a highly profitable freight broker business, okay? All right, so let's check the feedback here really quick. All right, so we got some good feedback. Aaron, thank you, thank you, everybody. Awesome. All right, cool. Let's jump into Q&A. We got some time for Q&A. Hit me up in the comments with your questions. Try to be specific about the questions. For example, here's what not to ask. How do I get shippers? Okay. It's too generic, right? Be a little bit more specific with your questions and I will be able to give you more valuable feedback. Okay. All right. Joe Almighty asks, uh, oh, no, he just had a comment. Awesome. Cool. All right. So hit me up in the comments with your questions, whether you be on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, YouTube, wherever you're at. Hit me up with some questions. We'll do some Q&A and then we'll get out of here for today and I'll be back next Monday with a new Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. Um, hit me up with any questions you guys have. Wow, normally I'm flooded with questions by now. Maybe there's a delay in the feed or something. I would have normally gotten five or six or eight or 10 questions by now. So hit me up in the comments if you guys have questions, if nobody has questions. And again, it doesn't have to be questions about niching down. It could be about for a broker startup. It could be about sales. It could be about marketing. It could be about rating. It could be about carriers. It could be about whatever, whatever you have. I'll do my best. I may not have all of the answers for you. And if I don't have the answers, I'll try to get them or I'll point you in the right direction. Okay. I'm, I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. Okay. I know enough to know that I don't know everything. All right. Uh, Victor asks, difference between agent and brokers. Okay, good question. A broker, okay, is licensed by the FMCSA, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, as a licensed freight broker, as an entity that can legally broker freight in the United States. Okay, so they are a licensed entity. They have their authority, they have their bond, and they are able to broker loads, okay? They are the, let's call it the uh, the core business. Now, 
A freight agent is typically someone that works underneath a freight broker as an independent 1099 contractor. So they work on straight commission and they are paid a percentage, typically somewhere between 50 and 70% of the profit on every load for bringing on customers and then managing and moving their freight. So let me give you an example. The freight agent gets licensed. He hires a freight or a freight broker gets licensed. He hires a freight agent to work as a contractor. That contractor reaches out to a shipper. The shipper offers him a load. He gets a load paying, you know, he's going to, the shipper is going to pay him $2,000 for the load. He finds a carrier that's willing to take the load for uh, $1,700, leaving a $300 profit. As an agent, he would say he got 50% of that. He would make $150 in his pocket for brokering that load. He does not need a license. He does not need a bond. He does not need an authority. He does not need insurance as an agent. That all falls under the brokerage, okay? So I hope that makes sense, right? So agents are focused more on the customer transaction and the broker in that case would fall more on the back office billing, collections, licensing, risk management, you know, paying carriers, all of that. I hope that makes sense. If not, ask a follow-up question. Question from Martinez, how to best transition from motor carrier to freight broker or freight agent? Well, first of all, if you are a driver or a carrier, you have a big advantage over when I first got started. I had no experience as a driver, no experience as a carrier, never worked for a shipper, didn't know any carriers, didn't know any shippers. So you have a huge advantage because as a driver, okay, or as a carrier, you have a, you already understand the industry, you understand the lingo, right? You already have connections, you know other carriers, you know shippers, right? Nobody knows better what it takes to pick up and deliver a load on time in good condition with no problems than a carrier, okay? So you have a huge advantage. Now, the way there's, there's probably a bunch of ways you could transition, but ultimately as a carrier, what you might want to do is just set up a brokerage simultaneously in a separate entity, right? Which would allow you as a carrier who, let's say, for example, you have six trucks as a carrier, just an example. You have six trucks. At any given point, you can only be moving six loads, right? And then you've got all the expense and risk associated with those trucks, right? And every time that truck is sitting still, you're losing money, right? Now, you may have customers that want to give you more freight than you have in trucks. So if you have a brokerage, you will be able to broker those loads out to other carriers and still make profit. So for if you are an existing carrier that wants to stay a carrier, having a brokerage can definitely supplement and increase your income and profitability with customers that have more, more demand than you have trucks. Okay. Make sense. You know, you don't have to, you know, just because you have six trucks and a customer wants to give you 10 loads, you don't need to go out and buy four trucks. You just need to start a brokerage. Okay. Uh, if you're looking to completely transition into brokerage, you know, I don't have any personal experience with that because I wasn't a carrier. I wasn't a driver, admittedly, but um, I would take it slow, right? I mean, I might run them simultaneously, just the thought process. I may run them simultaneously for a period of time and then slowly transition out of the asset side. I have had some students that have done that who were in the, in the uh, matter of fact, if you go to my YouTube channel and you search for, I think it was Tej Sethi, one of my, um, one of my freight broker success interviews, one of my student interviews, he started in the asset based side. He had trucks and then he eventually transitioned out of assets into brokerage. So that might be a good resource for you. So go to my freight broker bootcamp channel, look for the success stories and look for Tej, Tej Sethi. He's from Ontario. He's from uh, Canada, right? So that might be a big benefit for you. Hope that helps. So creates 49. What exactly do I need in a TMS system? Okay, well, when you first start, you don't need a whole lot unless you're moving loads, right? So um, what a TMS does, the core functionality of a TMS is this. You will be able to manage all of your freight, manage and monitor all of your freight. So for example, that's where all your customer load data is going to be stored. That's where all your carrier data is going to be stored. That's where all of your carrier contact and your shipper contact data is going to be stored. 
That's where all of your AR and AP, your receivables, your invoicing is going to begin and get stored. So it's a repository for all of your customer related transactions. So you will enter a load into the system and it typically migrates from available load to covered load, to dispatch load, to delivered load, right? So you're going to be able to manage and monitor your freight in a TMS. Now there are some advanced technologies and advanced features of TMS, but that's the core fundamentals of a TMS. Now there are a lot of great TMSs out there. I just had a training recently where I said, or I just had, I think I had a post recently where I said, if I had to start over today, I wouldn't build my own TMS. Back in 2003, we spent millions of dollars building our own TMS, okay? Um, because there wasn't a lot of good options back then, but today there are tons of good options. Now, the one that I recommend is a gentleman that I know personally, the CEO, Tim Hyam of Ascend TMS. They are a preferred vendor of Freight Broker Bootcamp. They're a partner of Freight Broker Bootcamp. So if you want to get access for free with no credit card to, a, to one of the top TMSs, Freight Broker TMSs out there, Go to FreightBurgerBootCamp.com forward slash TMS. If you fill out the form and then in the coupon code, you put FBBC, you will not need a credit card, number one. And number two, you will get a database. You will get a free bonus, which is a database, I think, of over 20,000 shippers that they've compiled, right, um, that, you can, that you can get access to, right? You just get the names and phone numbers. They're just leads, right? But yeah, you can get a shipper database. And, um, and that's where you would go. Just go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash TMS. It's absolutely free to sign up. You don't even need a credit card, but you got to make sure you put in the coupon code FBBC. Okay. Hope that helps. All right. Where are we? Oh, we got a million questions now. Holy cow. Yeah, next links. How can you make an appointment for drayage deliveries for Walmart? That's a internal Walmart, you know, systems component. You'd have to reach out to somebody at Walmart for that, or you know, whoever your shipper is shipping into there. I don't have all the nuances of that. You know, there are different systems for creating appointments. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I apologize. Um, for different shippers, and I don't. I'm not familiar with that specifically. All right. Hey, Dennis, have you dealt with any visa issues experienced with carriers with foreign drivers? I have not. <laughs> um, I know that a lot of drivers in the United States um, are immigrants or are, you know, have close descent to immigrants. So, but I don't have any experience specifically with visa issues in and around that. Yeah. I never owned a trucking company. I never had trucks. I never had to hire drivers. So it was one of those deals where I just don't have that level of experience. So I apologize. Okay. Question from Aaron. Dennis, any poss is it possible to show us how to get a load step-by-step? -step? I mean, give a live sample. Um, okay. So here's what I can do. First of all, I sold my freight brokerage in 2016. So I can't take an order from a shipper and then show you that um, from cradle to grave. But here's what I can do. If you go to my, um, if you go to my blog, right? Let's see. If you go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash blog and you search for how do freight brokers make money, it's going to walk you through a 17 part step by step process from contacting the shipper all the way through to invoicing and getting paid by the customer, right? And it connects all of those dots, right? So it's going to give you connect all those dots, one to 17 steps. So go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash blog and then search for how do freight brokers make money. You'll see a uh, you'll see a post 
It'll also have a video in there. So it'll walk you step by step by step through that entire process. Okay. I think that's the best way to help you from based on where your question is. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Smith, M. Smith asks, can you niche, can your niche be a product, for example, steel or agriculture? Yes, yes, you can. There are four core ways to niche down. One is by equipment type, right? So van, reefer, flatbed, right? So on and so forth. Another is by industry, right? Or product, steel, right? Agricultural, right? Uh, oil and gas, food and beverage, right? Those are Those are industries. The third one is by geography. So Northeast, Florida, Texas inbound, right? Uh, Texas outbound, the Midwest, whatever geography. And then the fourth, which is the way that I did it and the way that I recommend is what's called a hybrid, where you take two or more of those types, equipment, industry, geography, and you combine them. Right. So if you say you want to do steel industry in the Northeast, now all of a sudden you've isolated and you can focus all of your time and energy specific to the steel industry in the Northeast. That's just an example. Right. So, yeah, you can do it by industry. You can do it by product, but product sometimes is a little bit, you know, steel is not necessarily a product, it's more of an industry. There's a lot of products within steel, right? There's all kinds of, there's rolled steel. There's there's tons of different steel products. Um, I wouldn't necessarily narrow it down to an exact product, but I would narrow it down to more of an industry. Just like agriculture is not a product, right? It's an industry, but you've got all kinds of produce. You got fruits, you got vegetables, you got all kinds of, you know, all kinds of things that fall under agriculture. So I hope that helps. All right. Question. Do you have any tips on time management between prospecting shippers and carriers, dispatching loads, marketing, in-person outreach, while also doing a 70 hour a week, 70, doing a job 70 hours a week? Oof. All right. So it sounds to me like you're a driver or a carrier and you're out there running the roads and you have a full-time job. So if your question is how to do this part-time, you know, um, you know, my answer to you is this: you can start this business part time, but you can't start it in your spare time. Now, what do I mean by that? The spare time is like, oh, I think I'll work on the business for a half an hour, hour today. And then you don't work on the business for two or three days or a week. Whereas part time is, hey, I'm going to work on this business three hours a day, every day, right? Five days a week. And we're going to see how far we can get in this first 30, 60, 90 days to generating our first customer and our first revenue, right? So there's a difference between part-time and full uh, and uh, spare time. So you can't do it in your spare time. You can do it part-time. Eventually, you know, this is, I, I did a post recently. I said that this is, you know, freight brokering, being a freight broker, freight agent is not a side hustle, right? You can start out part-time, but if you're going to get serious about this and you're going to thrive and you're going to make any real money, you're eventually going to have to transition and commit to this on a full-time basis. Now, if you're a carrier, that means, you know, you may add brokerage to your services and then you'll hire people and you'll build it out just like you did as a carrier. But um, as far as time management goes, here's what I'm going to tell you. The most important thing you can do uh, if you're in that position, which is what it sounds like to me, is you need to dedicate time. You need to commit and say, listen, I'm going to do an hour a day. I'm going to do three hours a day. I'm going to do whatever number of hours per week. And these are our focal points. When you are brand new, 90 plus percent of your time is going to be focused on sales because you need to get shippers. You need to start generating loads. If you don't have loads, then you don't need carriers. And if you don't need carriers, well, then you're not making any money. So you need to focus on sales. Once you start getting some shippers, you're going to start getting busy rating and dispatching and working on the load boards and all that, you're going to have to spread that time out a little bit, right? So first things first, focus on sales, start getting shippers, then focus on supporting and servicing those shippers. Shippers, obviously you want to under promise over deliver, 
make sure those loads deliver on time, and then go back and get more loads, right? Start out slow. And I don't know that I'm giving you the answer that you want, but this is the answer that I have because there's no perfect system for doing this part-time. But try to dumb it down and spend 90% of your time on income-producing activities. That's all I can tell you. Hope that helps. Question. How can advanced AI algorithms optimize freight logistics networks to minimize transportation costs, reduce carbon emission, enhanced overall supply chain efficiency while simultaneously? Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, I'm sure that AI has some benefits there. This is a really crazy question. And it sounds to me like a loaded question. The perfect person doesn't have their name on there. So they're probably a LinkedIn user that sells some sort of AI software. Um, but listen, AI can help support some of the things that you do as a broker, but AI is not going to replace you as a broker. Okay. So AI is being built into all of the software and systems that we use. Google has a big AI. Facebook has a big AI, right? Outlook has AI built into it right? All of the software, Adobe has Outlook built or has AI, all software has AI built into it and it's going to continue to be enhanced by AI. Okay. So I think that AI will play a role, but it's no better than the hand, you know, it's like a hammer. It's no better than the hand that wields it, right? So you need, still need that experience in order to connect the dots and manage the overall process. So yeah, I think AI will play a role. It's yet to be seen, but I think it'll play a role in, in some, if not all of those things to help support brokers, carriers, and shippers. So I hope that helps. <laughs> Mark asks, what's your thoughts on FMCSA response to the fraud wave? Well, I don't know that they've had much of a response. I think the problem with the FMCSA and the DOT in general is they have a huge monumental task and I don't think, I think they're understaffed and they make too many regulations that cause too many ripple effects. Now the fraud, I'm, I'm speaking in generalities, right? But I think that's why they have strained resources, right? They could simplify a lot of this. And obviously fraud uh, is should be one of their number one concerns. But from what I've read, they've had little or no response. So I don't think they fully understand how to handle it. I know in the private marketplace that there's a lot of software and services out there that are now focusing on solving that problem of fraud, whether that be from the insurance side, whether that be from the carrier vetting side, whether that be from, you know, um, identity, you know, protection. So there's a lot of companies that are, see that that's a problem. And there are a lot of companies that are stepping into that, that void and looking to serve and support that need. So I would not rely heavily on the FMCSA to address the fraud problem, right? I think that the private market is going to address it. There are systems and software out there that you can use to try to help vet carriers, which is the most important step right? And vetting the right carriers and making sure that you're speaking to someone who's not trying to defraud you or your shipper, uh, double brokering the load or stealing the load or hijacking the load. So yeah, I mean, I would go to the private marketplace for that, but I'm not impressed with what the FMCSA has done up to this point. Sherry has a very uh, good question. Just want to know how to be successful in your boot camp. Some seem to think it's a scam because I'm interested in joining. Okay. Well, here's the thing, Sherry. I appreciate you asking the question. Here's what I'm going to let you know. That mileage may vary. I'm starting with that because what I want you to understand is this. I can provide all of the best accurate up-to-date information and training on how to go from A to Z. But that doesn't mean that the person that purchases the, purchases the training will, number one, even 
consume and take and finish the training. And number two, implement what's taught. I can't control those components, right? I can only control what I give them. I can't control what they do with it. So there may be some people out there that aren't happy with the results that they got. Probably more unhappy with themselves and their lack of activity or their lack of ability. If they look at it, really, they can't be upset with me because I offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. I do that for a reason. Because if you're not happy, I don't want your freaking money. I don't need your money. I don't need the grief. I don't need you talking poorly about my company. I'd rather just give your money back. So I've taken all of the risk out of the equation. You can kick the tires for 60 days. If you don't think that what I gave you is worth more than the $185 one-time fee for a one-year membership, then we'll give you your money back. There's no problem. I've taken all the risk out of it. So Sherry, you have zero risk and nothing to gain, nothing but positive to gain. Okay. So I hope that helps. You know, I don't really hear a whole lot of bad things online. I mean, we've got hundreds of reviews, positive reviews, whether that be through Facebook or through Google or through just through submission through the website. Um, you know, we've been in business well over a deck. We've been training since 2009, right? There's nobody else that offers the type of refund policy that we do. Not There's zero. A lot of programs don't offer any refund or guarantee. Some offer like a seven day or a 14 day or maybe a 30 day if it's for a specific reason, but none of them offer a 60 day unconditional money back guarantee. Okay. I've taken all the risk out of the equation for you. So I hope that helps, but thank you for asking. Okay, question from Victor. I'm very interested due to my family seeking me to research problems, but I'm not tech savvy. I'm thinking those skills are needed first. Your advice. Victor, you don't need to be tech savvy in order to be a broker. You really don't. I'm going to be totally honest with you. You don't need to be a programmer. You don't need to be, uh, you know, a, a, a designer. You don't need to be, if you can send an email if you can navigate basic online websites, okay, and you can do data entry, basic typing, I'm not talking about typing 60 or 80 words a minute, I just basic typing, you have the basic fundamental qualifications from a technology perspective. The technology that you will use most often, you are highly qualified, which is the phone. The second one is a basic laptop with web-based, with an internet browser that you can access the internet because that's probably where your TMS is going to be. That's definitely where your load boards are going to be. And that's definitely where your, the main tools are going to be. So you don't need significant technological skills or abilities in order to succeed as a freight broker. I promise you, I know some people that have taken my program and went on to huge success that technologically are neophytes. Admittedly, they don't know anything about technology. They just know how to follow some basic steps on how to enter a load on a load board, how to do a basic search on a load board, how to enter a load in the TMS, how to, you know, how to do some basic data entry. And the rest of the skill is geared towards sales, right? Um, and that's the biggest, that's the biggest hurdle for most people. That's the reason why I put together the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, by the way, um, that Freight Broker Sales Accelerator is my Freight Broker Sales Coaching Program where I take that piece of my brain, everything, my best Freight Broker Sales strategies, tactics, tools, but more importantly, my entire system that allowed me to do over $200 million as a Freight Broker. And I teach that and help you implement that in your business. Now, that program sold out. Um, you can't enroll in it right now. But if you want to get on the wait list and be the first to be notified when we do reopen it, you got to go on the wait list, freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. Okay. That's where you will 
get on the wait list, get notified. And at that point, you'll get all the details and you can enroll or not. It's not a free program. It's not a cheap program, but it's a extremely valuable program. Some of my top students have taken and parlayed that information into seven and even eight figure freight brokerages. I have students now that are doing over a million, two million, three million dollars a month in sales. And a lot of what they learned was from boot camp and from my freight broker sales accelerator program. So if you want to get on the wait list, costs you nothing to get on the wait list. Um, but it's the only way you'll get a chance to enroll when we do reopen it. And I don't have a date on when it's going to open back up. So just get on the wait list. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Sherry, how successful is my boot camp program? We've put over 10,000 students to the program you know, and since 2009, it's probably closer to 20,000. I got, I, I stopped counting. Um, we have rave reviews, check them out. And we offer a 60 day, 100% money back guarantee. So, you know, without sitting here patting on my, patting myself on the back too much, it's a very successful, we are the number one most cost-effective and comprehensive online freight broker and freight agent training program available. Hands down, anybody you ask, you're going to get that. You ask 100 people, 9 out of 10 are going to tell you that. Okay? Here you go. Listen to Jomo Mighty, Sherry. I, I can't, you know, it's better. When I say it about myself, it's bragging. When somebody else says it about me, it's proof. Sherry, I'm in the boot camp and the sales accelerator. One word to describe it, gold. Very straightforward, easy to absorb. And no, I'm not getting paid for this. <laughs> Thank you, Jomo, so much. Appreciate the kind words and the support. Kim, same thing. Say Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. So happy that you're happy. Okay, question from Marianne. If I'm being honest, I don't know how to start calling shippers. Do you have any encouraging words or ideas to get started? Yes, I do. Okay. I got, I mean, if you go to my YouTube channel, we talk a lot about cold calling, right? Go to my YouTube channel, go to my, I got a playlist all about sales and find things about cold calling. Okay. But I'm going to give you a couple tips right here that are, you'll hear some of them in there. There's a whole lot more on the YouTube channel. Okay. So you can get on the YouTube channel. You go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash YouTube. I think, I think that's where you go, right? If you go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash YouTube, it'll bring you right to the YouTube channel. Now here's a couple things of advice. Number one, do not sound like a salesperson. You need to do everything in your being to avoid sounding like a typical salesperson, which means you can't take generic sales scripts, call a hundred people and expect the, you know, money to start falling out of the trees. Okay. Generic sales scripts don't work. They're a very low percentage ROI, right? You make a thousand calls, you may get a very small response because they're generic. And they've heard it all before. So what you need to do is you need to create, you need to learn how to gather some sales intelligence, gather some data about the industry, the company, the prospect, and then leverage that to create a compelling sales hook, right? Because the hardest part about cold calling is getting their attention in the first three to five seconds. I talked a little bit about that earlier. And that is what's critical because if you can't get their attention, all you're going to hear is the dial tone or we're not interested. Okay. And then you're going to have to start all over. Right. So you got to get their attention. You got to be different. You probably heard me say this before. I did not coin this phrase. It was, I heard it first from Sally Hogshead. Different is better than better. Okay. You have to learn to be different. And so that's where you use sales intelligence to create a compelling sales hook and you don't sound generic. Now, once you've done that, here's what you got to do. You got to practice and you should record yourself and maybe a partner role playing, role playing on your cold call, role playing on your voicemail message that you're going to leave and role playing on overcoming common sales objections. 
So if you role play, that is going to build your confidence, right? It's going to build that lingo and it's not going to sound like you're reading and you're going to sound very fluid and that is going to make a huge difference. So those are a few tips. If you're apprehensive to pick up the phone and I don't mean to self-promote, but I'm going to tell you right now, one of the biggest things, topics we talk about in the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator is number one module is sales mindset. I can't tell you. A huge percentage of people that join my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator have the exact same problem as you. They are, they have a lot of fear and apprehension around making cold calls, whether that be face to face, whether that be over the phone or whatever. And we spend a lot of time helping people get past that fear. So if that's a big part, now that's just module one. There's five weeks. It's a five week coaching program. Week one, we talk all about mindset. And you would be shocked how many people have the same issue. So you're not alone. Trust me, you're not alone. It was a lot more people than I ever imagined were going to have that challenge. So we end up spending an entire uh, module on it. We spend an entire coaching call. Usually it's an hour to two hours. And again, these are live calls, right? So um, get on the wait list. That's all I can tell you. You know, you might, oh, not there. That's actually, I want the wait list, not that one. I think that'll bring you to the wait list, but hold on a minute. Waitlist, freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash waitlist. That's the waitlist for the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. Okay. Hope that helps. All right. What else we got here? Hold on. Let me see if I got a couple more questions. Question from Michael, would you call customers that are obviously ignoring you? Well, I don't know how you would know they were obviously ignoring you. Maybe if you've less, left five or 10 voicemails uh, or sent five or 10 emails and they're ignoring you. But what I would probably do is I would probably try to figure out a different sales hook because your approach is the issue. Nine out of 10 times it's your approach. If you sound generic and you're saying the old school smile and dial, Hey, you know, we've got trucks in your area. I thought I was wondering if we might be able to help you out with some of your freight, right? Or whatever facsimile of that is, right? Or, hey, I'm a freight broker. Wonder if we could do some quotes for you and maybe help you move some loads. Those generic quotes are dead. You're not going to, those are going to have horrible returns. But if you take the time to create a compelling sales hook and you differentiate yourself, your response rate is going to go through the roof. Okay. So I wouldn't necessarily give up on a prospect. I would just take a different approach. You know, it's that old adage, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. you got to change your strategy, change your tactic. But there are shippers that just don't want to do business with brokers. Um, most brokers are using, or most shippers are using brokers. But uh, if they're not compelled by your message, if you make a bad first impression, you may never be able to overcome that. It depends. Good question though, Michael. Thank you. Killing you soon, Ash. Your course is at uh, learn at your own pace. The Freight Broker Bootcamp Startup Course is go at your own pace. It's not a coaching program. That is a go at your own pace. You have access 24-7, 365. If you buy a gold membership, you get one-year access. If you buy a platinum membership, you get lifetime access, lifetime support, okay? So the startup program, the boot camp, is a self-paced program. You can do it from home, 24-7, 365. The Freight Broker Sales Accelerator is a hybrid program. What I mean by that is there's an online course component where all of the teaching takes place, right, where you have access to that 24-7 but we also do five weeks of live coaching, right? Where I actually work with you, answer all your questions, handle all of your issues and challenges, and then help you implement that inside your business, okay? So that is the difference. That's a hybrid program, okay? So the boot camp is a, is a go at your own pace and the uh, sales accelerator is a hybrid. Hope that helps.
Okay, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I really appreciate you being here. If you found value in anything I've offered you today, whether that be the training or live Q&A or answered your question, do me a favor, give me a tissue, say God bless you because I'm about to sneeze. But more importantly, hit the like button, share the stream, tell others, let people know about Freight Burger Bootcamp. I truly appreciate it. Um, I will be back here next Monday with another Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. If you're curious about becoming a Freight Burger Freight Agent, check out FreightBurgerBootCamp.com. Can't make it any easier. We offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. You can enroll at FreightBurgerBootCamp.com. See you next week on the next Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. Thanks, all.